Hello there, World of Tankers. I'm Drudels Blitz, and today I'm going to be doing my how-to video on medium tanks. And specifically in my garage, you can see I have the Leopard 1 and the AMX 30B. And the reason I have just these two tanks is because about two and a half hours ago, I asked uh, you guys in a poll what tanks you wanted to see. And you guys voted for the Leopard and the AMX 30 over all of the other tanks. And the reason these two are here is because they're very, very similar. They're very lightly armored, got pretty solid guns, and great gun depression. And they're also very, very quick. So there were also tanks like the M48 Patton, M60, the hull down tanks that have very good gun depression, very good turrets, and then tanks like the 121B, T62A that have also very good turrets but not so great gun depression and great damage per minute. So if you want to vote on what I do next, if you want to see a how to tank destroyer video or another how to medium video and you want to see a specific tank, let me know in the comments down below and as well hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon because the next time I post a poll it's going to notify you immediately when I do post it. But as I said, I'm going to be currently going over the Leopard 1 and the Amex 30B. And the way this series works is, as you can see here, I'm moving my screen, and that's because I do live gameplay. And the reason I do this is because when you see a YouTuber's video on, let's say, the Leopard 1 for an example, they're going to be showing you the perfect game on the perfect map where everything went their way and the enemy team was probably pretty bad. And the reason of that is because they just want to show you uh, their mastery gameplay on how everything worked out well. But that doesn't really show players how to learn anything. Because when they're showing you that replay and you push that spot, 99% of the time, the enemy team isn't going to go that way. You're going to be up against different tanks, and it's just not going to be that perfect, and you're not going to do great. And because of that, showing people just excellent replays of how a tank did doesn't show you how to run a tank. The best way to show how to run a tank, I feel, is to do it in live gameplay because I don't know what's going to happen. I can't just commentate on a video that I'm watching. I have to come up with the ideas in my head and tell you guys what I'm thinking as I'm doing it. Without further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. I'm going to start off with the Amex 30B uh, because I feel that's the easier version over the Leopard just because it actually does have pretty decent turret armor. It does have that huge cupola sticking up on top, but it still can bounce quite a few shells. And the main way to run these types of tanks, the Amex 30B, I definitely run a little bit more aggressive than the Leopard is you want to sit a little bit further back in the map. And the reason of that being is because you don't want to lose your hit points in this type of tank. If you get hit by a 183, or you get hit by, let's say, that T124 on the enemy team who's in Pramo, oh, this is not going to be a great match for me. Um, but if you're going up against tanks like that, you don't want to be penned directly with an HE for 1,000 hit points because that's more than half of your hit points gone immediately. So because of that, you want to be very, very careful and especially when you run this tank. Now, I'm actually playing on PC right now, I also want to say that, which is usually not my strong points. That's one thing I do try and be careful of. But currently, I'm looking, they got one medium, two medium, and the Amex 50B is also a pretty quick tank. So because of that, I want to be very careful on what vehicles um, they're coming up against. But as you can see here, they don't have crazy gun depression tanks. And because of that, I'm not super worried on the tanks I'm coming up against, except for that grill that nailed a pretty solid tank in my turret. And that's what I mean by these tanks really don't have armor, and they're not very forgiving. I lost my hit points there, and I'm never going to get them back. And because of that, you have to be very, very careful in a tank like this. But this T124 as well um, has to be pretty careful here. I don't know what I should do, because that grill's at the back, and the mouse is pushing over. So I definitely got to be careful here. Um... I think the mouse is going to push over onto my side, so I'm going to cross, be careful here, I'm going to get over to the safer side of the ridge, and I'm going to try and hide my tank with the bush, snap that T62A there, uh, that's a nice little tap, and hopefully that grill isn't sitting directly back there, because if he is, uh, next time I pull up, I'm not going to be doing too well. Let's do the auto-aim for PC, let's see how that works. Um, but you can see, I'm definitely trying to pay attention at all times on the map. Uh, I'm not going to hit that. Uh, but I'm trying to pay attention because I know that if I don't pay attention, I'm really going to regret it. I don't want to be hit by that grill. I just saw him over there. So now I know I can back up over here, and this is going to be the safer part for me. I'm always trying to put myself in the safest position possible. Let's pull over this ridge, snap the 62A, back down. Um, I see this bat shed over here harassing my teammate, and I don't want that. So I'm going to try get rid of this bat chat, see if we can tap him uh, through the turret. Nope, hit the ridge. Um, hopefully that mouse is going to hit him. Yes, he does. But you can definitely see him always trying to stay behind cover. Now, of course, I'm going to try and tap the mouse here because it's a mouse. Why not? 
Um, and I might be able to just keep bullying him here, which is something that's very nice. Um, of course, I'm not a great aim on World of Tanks PC, but right now I see my 140 needs quite a bit of help. So I'm going to go over there and try and help him out. And that's one thing you definitely got to do in your mediums, is you got to help your teammates out. You never want to leave a brother behind. And I've got speed. I know that I've got enough damage from it with this 140 to tear this guy to pieces. And because of that, I'm not super worried about him. He's not going to target me, I don't think. He's going to target that 140, and this is where you want to use smarts. Because, as you can see, he's not targeting me. I'm not super worried about the Tune 5 v And now if he starts looking at me, this 140 is going to tear into him. So this is one thing you can definitely do in a tank like this, is you can sort of bully the player um, into making them aim at one or two players when you know that you can do fine. Now I see that he doesn't have a repair kit here. So because of that, I'm going to try flank his tank, as you can see, that worked pretty well. Uh, I've got his butt sticking out because he is a rear turreted tank. See, we can, uh, well, I guess I got enough hit points to just take the shot. So let me just flank him. And there you go, you can see that was a pretty good game. Uh, you definitely have to pay attention to what you're doing in a tank like this, though, because you saw there, I was always trying to pay attention where I was pushing. As soon as that grill hit me, I knew that I couldn't pull back out there because he wasn't spotted. I don't know where he is. So I can't take the risk of pulling back over the ridge. So I drove back over to the other side because I thought the mouse was going to come over. And those are the kind of things that you really have to think about when you're playing these types of tanks. And that's what a lot of players don't really know, is when I'm playing a game, there's like 2,000 things that are going through my mind. I'm looking at all the players. I'm looking around the map. I was really worried that that Amex 50B was actually going to try and shoot me in the side. So that's why I flanked over to help out the 2 and 5B. And I also helped that 2 and 5B because I figured, well, that 140 is really low on hit points. So... If I can use that 140's low hit points to make that 2 and 5 beat target that player, as you saw, it worked out really well and I was able to shoot the guy, and that's one way to negate for the really poor armor on this tank. And as you saw, we did a pretty good game, 3400 damage, so hopefully we'll get another good one out. Now this is a really good map for a tank like the Amex 30B, because as I said, it has pretty decent turn armor, and because of that, I'm easily going to be able to use the dunes here, use the accurate gun, and try my best. I'm actually surprised I did as well as I did in that last game. But they got an E5, 62A is the main tank I'm looking at, and they've got a 140, and as well a grill. And the grill could be pushing medium. They have fairly mobile tanks, so I'm going to be cautious because I could get completely steamrolled and murdered. So what I'm going to do is because my tank doesn't have a ridiculous amount of armor, I'm going to get the high grounds here and push up. But as soon as I spotted that IS-4, I know that they're not going this way. As well, there's nobody in front. And that's one thing you have to keep in mind, is when you play a medium, and you only have two on your team, which is... Not a lot, and the enemy team could easily just push over here because they do have faster tanks. I see the medium spot over there already, but you don't want to over-aggress yourself, especially in a tank like a Leopard or an Amex 30B, because I know that I don't have a lot of armor, and if I push too far out, I'm going to die. Or if I just waited back, I have an excellent view range. I could have just spotted the guys way at the back of the map. Now, I wanted to push up here, see if there's any players. There you go. There's the grill. Tap that grill once, and now I'm going to be a little bit careful tap on my fast reloader and let's see if I can tap him one more time yes we do I told you I've got that really thick turret armor and what I'm doing here is you can see I'm never gonna sit out in the open for uh, a really long period of time because I don't want that grill to be able to just tap me that's of course not gonna be very well for me um, and of course I don't want to get hit by the grill now T124 is not aiming at me 62A is not aiming at me so we're gonna load an HE shell and just push on this guy he missed, so now we're good. There you go. That was APCR. That was not HE. That's not what I wanted. Um, but now I'm just going to take the shot, clear him off the map, and let's push on to the next guy. And I see this T124 aiming at me, so I'm immediately going to duck and get away. And that's one thing you definitely have to do in these tanks, is be extremely observant. Because I see the T124 aiming at me. So I'm going to use some skill here. I saw him turning away. I see the 62A over here. So... I'm going to wait for him to go over there, going to wait, going to wait until I'm unspotted. Then, uh, I think I am spotted, yeah, 62A spotted me. See if we can tap him. Nope. But I'm going to wait for this T124 to stop looking at me, because that way I'm not going to get hit by him. And first thing I'm going to do, shoot an HE to his track. He did repair it, but I know he's not going to repair it next time, so that's the first thing you want to do, is because of that... Hopefully, I'm going to be able to get him in the track again. There you go. Tracked him. He can't repair his track now. So because of that, he's immobilized. And that's one thing you really want to try and do in a tank like this is, as you saw, I shot an HE there just because I knew that he was going to get rid of his track. And as I said, even if there's one tank left, I still don't want to lose 1,000 hit points because I might lose credits in this tank. It's not worth it to lose hit points over 
not losing hit points. So, as you saw there, I shot him in the track, and I shot him again because I knew he wouldn't have a second repair kit, immobilized him, stopped him from shooting my teammates, and we all cleared him. And that's one thing you can really do in these accurate tank destroyers, is get some really nice shots on the move, when you're aiming at tank's weak spots. So when I'm shooting at an IF-7 or anything like that, I'm always going to aim for the front track wheel. And because of that, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to keep spamming them with shell after shell, immobilizing them, really ticking them off, and it does a really good job. Now moving on to the Leopard, you're going to see me change my playstyle quite a bit. Because the Amex 30B, I'm actually extremely aggressive in, just because it has such a great uh, armor profile. But the Leopard has a way better gun. I think it has the most damage per minute at tier 10 now uh, for a medium tank. I think Wargaming gave it like that 1% buff or whatever. Uh, but because of that, it has an extremely good gun, very accurate. I think it's the most accurate gun in the game, pretty much on par with the Chieftain in my opinion. And because of that, it gives you the ability to sit a little bit further back. If the tank didn't have a great gun, that would be an issue. But Wargaming gave it a really good gun on purpose because they know you can't be super aggressive in this tank. Also, sorry about my dog barking in the background. Uh, but right now, T92E1, 62A, they got some fast tanks, but they also got a tank like the 100 and the IS-4. Again, though, I noticed that my team's sort of splitting here, so I'm not going to push immediately up, because I know if I push too far, as I said last game, this is a tank that is not very forgiving. And they've got some big guns on their team. they got a T92, E100. I really don't want to get hit by any of those players, but as soon as I saw them get spotted over here, of course, this 62A went right in my way. Um... But I know I'm not going to get detected. I've got that amazing gun. Again, I'm going to aim for this guy's front track wheel. There you go. Tracked him. And now I know he only has one repair kit left. There you go. Now he's tracked. And now, oh, he has two repair kits. So normally a players only carry one. That's a smarter player. But now I know he has absolutely no repair kits. So it's going to be very easy to take advantage of him, track him, take him out. I'm going to use my excellent gun there, peek over the ridge. Now I'm probably spotted. So as soon as you shoot somebody, always expect to be spotted. That's one thing that's a very important skill. Sometimes you'll see people shoot at somebody, and they're not going to act like they're spotted for some reason. And when they do that, it really doesn't work out well. So you want to always act as if you're spotted, because it's just going to make your life a lot easier. Instead of thinking that you're not spotted, and then for some reason you lose 5,000 hit points two seconds later, um, I can just know that I'm not spotted, back up, wait for the light bulb to appear, and then I'll be fine. And I can see here that my 62A is distracting this Yag Tiger. So I'm going to push up here, try and tap him in the hull. Yes, there we go. Now he does tap me. As I said, the tank does not have a crazy amount of armor. Um, this isn't the ideal match because really no tanks went where you wanted them to. But the way I would suggest to run the Leopard is more like a support medium. You want to run it more like a tank to sure, not exactly like a tank to sure, because of course it isn't a TD. Um, but you want to run it more like a tank destroyer, more so a medium, because mediums are usually, as it says in the title, medium. They've got medium armor, a pretty good gun, but it's not going to stop anything crazy. Uh, but everything on the tank is medium-wise, so you don't want to be uh, ridiculously aggressive in this tank, because it's more like a light, and that's one thing that a lot of people don't know. There you go, there's a T92 when I hate those things. Um, but I see that IS-4 aiming at me, going to try and duck over the ridge. I think he actually hit me the gun there. Um, I definitely have to get my skills a little bit uh, better in this tank. Try and tap him in the turret. It's an extremely accurate gun. Because of that, it gives you the ability to get really nice shots off. Now, that T92 is probably going to aim at me. Um, so I'm going to target him. I hate those things. Oh, no. He did clear my teammate. Uh, we're going to finish him off, though. He's not going to survive this. Extremely accurate guns. It's also very quick. Uh, but you can see, aiming really is not an issue in this tank. It's just one of the nicest guns in the game. So because of that, you really don't have to worry about much. I'm going to try and tap him again. We're going to flank him now. Because I don't think he's going to target me. He's got tanks in the front. Um, I'm just going to bully him from the rear. Well, that was unfortunate. Um, but you can really use your mobility in a tank like the Leopard because it is so quick to bully these types of tanks. And you'll do really well at it. You can saw here. See, saw here. Good English. Oh, I'm getting some unlucky shots here. Come on, Pat. Um, but you can see... I was able to use my mobility, able to sit at the back of the map. I just noticed my T92E1 kind of being useless back there. But this was a pretty decent game in the tank. It wasn't spectacular. I didn't get to show you guys what exactly you want to be doing in it. But as you saw at the beginning of the game, I sort of sat there. And I camped at the back because I knew that the tank isn't going to be great if I'm pushing it directly in there at the beginning because they got these big guns. So what I did is I saved my hit points. I sniped at the back did my damage, and then I noticed, well, my team needs help. My team is losing on the push, 
And I noticed that immediately. So what I was thinking is that I'm going to push in there, I'm going to do my job, I'm going to shoot all the guys, and that's something that's really important is you need to know when to push in and when to stay still. Because a leopard, you can get away, of course, camping in the back because it doesn't have a crazy amount of armor. But you shouldn't always camp in a tank like this. You want to use your mobility, want to use the speed because it has the speed for a reason. It has this amazing gun for a reason. Now this map, I always push it into the spot here. I notice that they have a mouse, they have an IS-7, so they might be pushing across. And if they do so, I'm easily going to be able to snap them maybe once or even twice when they cross through the spot. And if I know that I don't spot anybody within the next 10 or 15 seconds, there you go, there, there's the first guy. Um, I notice if I don't spot anybody within the next couple seconds there, I would e immediately back up. But I see that Hori is definitely aiming towards me, so I'm not going to pull out. I know exactly where his tank is, though. So now I'm going to pull out here. I'm going to load a heat shell and take a little blind shot right towards there. Um, we'll see if I get spotted. Nope. I don't know if he was still sitting there. But I now see the mouse is over here, the AMX, all their team is over here. So I'm not sure why that Hori's over there. I'm going to try and snap this AMX, though. Um, and one of the things you'll notice, again, is I'm never just going to sit out in the open. I'm always going to be very quick with who I'm shooting at when I'm backing up. You'll see that AMX missed me because I was super quick. Um, that's one thing you always want to do is just be extremely quick in a tank like this. You don't want people to have the ability to shoot at you. If they do, of course, that's not very good. And that was my fault there. I didn't think that he'd be able to get that shot on me. Um, but this is a bad situation just because he, as you saw, there's in a very good spot right now. Um, but it looks like he was pushing in. I got a very lucky bounce there. And because of that, I'm going to go. I know that I can't fight a tank like that. I'm not going to do great. Too much armor. Too good of a gun. And I'm not going to do super well against it. So I'm going to get out. I think I did actually hit that Hori, which is pretty lucky. Um, but I noticed the bat shots over here. Let's see if we can snap him. Yes, there we go. I know that the Hori can't hit me. And that's one thing you always want to do is make sure that the other tank that you're aiming at before can't hit you. And as soon as that bat shot goes away, I'm going to try and sneak into this bush here. See if I can get this Hori out. Um, because I know I'm currently not spotted and that bat shot's not coming near me. I got enough hit points to at least survive. But I know if this Hori hits me, oh, that's never good. Um, that's not good. So now I got this Hori over here. But I see this one's not aiming at me currently. So because of that, I'm going to snap him in the side. I know this one up here isn't aiming at me. And this is just what you want to do. Is you want to pay attention to everything on the map. If you don't pay attention for one thing, you might lose. As soon as I saw that Hori shoot, I knew that I'm fine there. Now I know that there's a Hori, I think, still up here. Maybe not. If there isn't, I'm going to go for the Bat Chat. I know I can keep up with the Bat Chat. And you always want to clear a tank that's able to keep up with you. Because you don't want to have that amount of damage per minute just shooting at you. Bat Chat's actually got around 3,000 damage per minute. But I'm pretty sure he's reloading his clip, even though T92 steals that kill. Um, we're very, very good here. This T92 might regret pushing across here, though. I don't know where this Hori is. Um, because I know it's not an extremely quick tank, so he can't, couldn't have gotten super far. He's got to be sitting somewhere around here. Um, let's see if we can get this mouse, though. You can see now I'm flanking, using my excellent damage per minute. Uh, I don't even care if this mouse shoots me, but I don't think he's going to be able to. Get the shell into the mouse, and now I'm going to try and find that Hori. I still don't know where that guy went. Um, that's pretty. Maybe he flanked around back there. Uh, but that's actually pretty impressive that the guy was able to get there so quickly. But because I know this T92 is distracting this AFK Fosh, never mind, it is an AFK Fosh, so I guess that doesn't really matter. Um, this T92 is going to kill this guy. Ooh, no we didn't. We got an extra shot in there. So now you got to use your brain, try and think where the Hori is. So we were all around this side of the map, so he's definitely not over here. Hori over there is dead, so I know it's not that one. And the guy... Well, I guess he's all the way over here. I don't know how he got there. I was thinking he was somewhere in the edge. But, oop, that was an unlucky shot. So I'm going to try and bait him out here, see if he can shoot at me. Um, there you go. He shot. Unfortunately, I missed. I'm just not extremely accurate on PC. But uh, I know he's got super weak armor on the front, so I'll just miss my shot on the front plate. And there you go. That was a pretty easy game. I'll do one more because we're doing so well. I'm probably going to jinx it and get a defeat here. But you can see that was another really good game in the tank. And if you just use your brain in a leopard, you're going to do fine. You saw I never put my tank in a position where I knew I was going to lose all of my hit points. I knew that that I7 was over there. So I didn't want to fight the I7 because I have mobility. There's still six other tanks left on the team at that time. And I can flank somewhere else, do my job over there. And deal with the I-7 later, because I know that he'll either be at lower hit points from my team, or I can flank him and deal with him from the rears. You saw, 
I flank that mouse because I know if I'm going at a mouse in the front, I'm going to have to aim at him. I'm going to have to take my time, load my heat, do all my work. Even though my gun is extremely accurate, it doesn't matter when you're going up against a mouse because it's a lot of effort to try and pen the front. And while I'm doing that, he can load an HE, shoot me for 600. Other people can shoot me, and it's not worth it to just sit still. So instead of sitting still and waiting for the size 7 to aim at somebody else and possibly for me to pen him, I figured, you know what? I know where the hoary is. I know where the bat shed is. I'm going to flank around and see if I can do something better over there. Now in this game, they got a T95U6, T62A, T62A. And those are the fast tanks on their team. And yeah, T95U6, I sort of count as a medium. That's how I run it. So that's how I expect the enemy team to run it. You can saw there our Super Conqueror said to push this way, even though the team almost didn't want to go this way. I completely agree with him, though. Um, and I'm going to push my tank right to this bush. This bush right here is the most important bush in the game. If you run a fast tank, especially with excellent um, spotting, of course, I drove a little bit past it. But if you've got a good tank with excellent spotting, you can see if you can get there first, it's going to give you the ability to... I don't even think I got spotted there. That's very rare. Um, but you can see it gives you the ability to just bully people. Now, if I get spotted, no, I didn't get spotted yet. See if we can spot some other people trying to cross here. I'll know if their whole team went here or they did it uh, very, very soon. Uh, there also could be people that come up behind you at this spot. But I noticed my Super Conqueror is here, so I am fine from the rear. Uh, so there's not really much I have to worry about currently. And the thing is, they got a bunch of tank destroyers on their team. And because of that, I'm not moving. I know that they could have a tank destroyer right at this bush, right past this tree. Uh, they could have tank destroyers all over, and I don't want to get hit by them because, of course, a tank destroyer is going to ruin my day. That guy shot a heat round at me, not sure why. I'm uh, going to tap him through the gun mantlet. Let's see if we can tap him one more time. Nope, I'm going to back up. I'm always going to try and snap the shell as quickly as possible, though, you'll notice. There you go, though. There's the tank that flanked me, 268. So I had a feeling that they might be flanking. 62A was at that bush there, but I don't think he's there anymore think that he noticed that his team is in very bad uh, trouble. So I'm going to try and flank this guy now, help my teammate out, maybe ram him for the kill. There we go. Um, that's not good though. That's a 4005. Don't want to fight that. There's a 62A. This isn't going too well anymore. So I'm just going to wait here. And the 62A, he's sitting at that bush. If you can see directly in front of my tank, uh, he's sitting at that bush back there. And I don't want to go over here because I know that I'm probably going to die. And the 62A probably thinks I'm staying over in this spot. So I'm going to flank, get over here. That Super Conqueror might not like that position over there. But I'm going to try and get up on this ridge here because I know I've got a pretty decent camera rating. And as soon as I shoot, though, I need to get out of cover because that 62A is right over there. So I know that as soon as I shoot, that the 62A is probably going to have a shot on me. However, I think I might be able to sneak a shot on this IS-7 if I'm lucky. There we go. And immediately I'm going to back up because I think I might be spotted from that 62A. And you always have to guess that. Even if you aren't spotted, it's not worth the chance to be spotted from the tank. You can see they're using excellent gun depression, excellent aiming time. The tank does very well. And even when you're at such low hit points in a tank that really you wouldn't expect to do well in, you can see that you can do fine as long as you take your time because it has an excellent gun, as I said. You can just use your gun, take the shots, and you're going to be fine. And you can see there again, an excellent shot. Now this isn't good for me. Um, I might die here. Unfortunately, I did. But I did my job, I got some extra shots off, and I didn't die. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm not sure why that enemy 62A was camping, that's definitely not how you want to run a 62A. Uh, however, this Super Conqueror's got to get this gun here, he's over-angling his tank a little there. Um, but talking about the game, I'm not, you can see that even when you're low hit points, you can still make an effort, especially in a weekly armored tank, you just have to sit a little bit more careful back. Now, I should have expected that 62A to come for me. That's one thing that I had in my mind, but I thought that Super Conqueror was pushing around, so I wasn't super worried about that. But, ooh, this grill's not going to be happy. I saw my teammate miss that. But, ignoring this game, I'll go back to Garage, because I'm guessing we might lose this. As you saw, though, we still did pretty good that game. We got some damage out. I was able to bully tanks, and that's the nice thing about these vehicles. They got very good guns, so you want to use the gun. Use the gun depression the vehicle has. And you want to use your mobility. You notice these games, I almost never sat still. Even when I was up on that ridge there, I didn't just want to sit up on the top because if, I knew if, immediately if I got spotted. That 62A that was camping back there, I knew where he was, but I had a feeling that I was going to get spotted very soon. So as soon as I got spotted, I knew that I had to get out of there. Now, of course, I got spotted a different way, but it's not always fun when you do run a tank like this and you see a bunch of tank destroyers on the enemy team. But you want to make sure that if you see a 183 on the enemy team in your 
Leopard or an Amex 30B, you don't just want to push up there and be super aggressive. And that's why in that game you saw me wait in that bush for quite some time because I didn't want the enemy team to just shoot me. Now, unfortunately, I didn't notice the 268 was actually behind me flanking. He got there pretty quick. But I was very cautious the whole game, and that's the way it works. Now, I really like both of these tanks, and I hope you learn something new in these games, how to run the tanks, how to snap shots. And the most important thing I would say, the most important tips, is never sit out in front of the enemy for more than a second. I'd say if you're looking at the enemy and you're looking at a mouse or you're looking at a weak spot of a tank for more than one or two seconds, if you're using heat or something like that, just don't bother because by then they're probably aiming at you. They know they're easily going to pen you and you're going to lose a lot more hit points than they are. So there's no point to do that. As well, know when to push in. When I would start off in a Leopard or an Amex 30B, I would start off pretty far back in the map. I'd stay in a normal medium position where you can use your gun depression behind a bush, know you're going to do fine. And when you're doing that, you know that nobody's going to be hitting you. You're not going to get spotted. Wait for the enemy team to get spotted. And once you see that a 183, a Jagdpanzer, some of the big bad tank destroyers have been spotted on the enemy team, then you know where they are. You can flank them. You know where the heavies are. Isolate somebody that's alone, like a tank destroyer. You can isolate them, easily flank them. That's something I didn't get to show you, but you can easily get behind a tank destroyer with a leopard. And if you know he's isolated, like that Fosh there, I could have easily taken care of him. But as you saw, these were some pretty all-round good games. I hope that you guys uh, did... Oh, actually won this game. 2,500, though, not too bad for the scenario I was stuck in, especially with that shell up my butt. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And as well, make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.